Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to this reading vlog. Uh, whoops. <laughs> um, if you watched my last video in which I wrap up my TBR Clearout Readathon, or rather, you know, what I read during the TBR Clearout Readathon, you know that I change my mind really often about books and it just makes it really awkward for me to film. I'm reading one of the books that I got recently on my e-reader and that is I Let You Go by Claire McIntosh. I don't know why I thought this was a thriller. I don't really think it is. I mean there are some thriller aspects to it but I don't think it is a thriller like as a whole but you know I'm still reading so I don't know. By the way I just want to say because it's a reading vlog it contains spoilers so <laughs> just in case i am going to talk about like specific things right away if you haven't read the book and it's a book that you want to read you should probably read the book first and then come back maybe i'll film a review once i'm done and i can totally do it like spoiler free <laughs> so just to let you know if you don't know what this book is about this is about a mom, Jenna, uh, who has lost her son to a hit and run accident. Um, and basically we are following like two perspectives, Jenna's perspective and what she's doing with her life after her son's death. And um, Ray, the detective inspector in charge of the case. Um, but things have, have taken a turn. Um, I'm reading it on, on my reader. I'm on chapter, let me show you. I'm on chapter 15. As, as, I, as you can see, like I've changed the font size and now, because this was like originally like 300 pages or a little over 300 pages on my reader and I didn't need the font to be that big. So I changed it and it's a lot smaller now and now it's only 192 pages. <laughs> um, but yeah, it still is really small. Like the font is really small, so it takes you a while to read the entire page. But I am on chapter uh, 15 and I'm enjoying it, but I'm really confused. I thought, first I thought this was a thriller, you know, and I don't really feel like it is. Like it's a, a sort of a contemporary mystery novel. Um, sorry, I got a text. I'm on my lunch break, so. Uh, we get texts from every now and then from you know colleagues and stuff about things we have to do like more things we have to do um, But yeah, I actually you know, I thought this was a thriller for some reason, but it's not really at least not yet um, There are some thriller aspects to it like the mystery of who hit Jacob the little boy and ran away I don't know if they'll be able to catch him because it's been months, like maybe even a year by now since the accident and the, ca the case was closed because they couldn't find anything, they had no leads. Um, and she, Jenna, has decided to move, like she didn't even notify the police. I don't really think she had to, but she was a witness. And she just threw away her phone and she's living in Wales. I, they, she's from Bristol, by the way, and she moved to Wales, and now she's just there, like, taking photographs, she's an artist, and she's taking photographs of the beach and selling them as, like, postcards, so that, that's how she's making a living, and Ray, the detective inspector, he was forced to close the case because they didn't have any leads, and he is struggling with his family life because, you know, work gets in the way, they have two kids, his wife and Ray, they have two kids, they have a little girl, Lucy, and they have Tom, and Tom is a teenager, and is in that weird teenage phase, you know, they just don't talk to you, they grumble. Um, got a lot of those. <laughs> and it is upsetting, like they don't know what to do, and their family life is just not perfect now, because he keeps working too much and not paying attention, and his wife feels like he's neglecting his family which is like the old tale. Every time you watch like a mystery or a cop show, like a TV show or a film, like you always have that cop, that detective that just works too much and neglects, neglects his family. Or you have that detective that is divorced because his wife couldn't keep up with his like passion for his job. Um, like they always say like that, like she couldn't keep up. Um, but I totally understand why, you know, 
wives, sorry, you can see my finger. I totally understand why the wife would be upset. <laughs> I mean, if you have a family, you're going to have to adjust, you're going to have to adapt to your family. Otherwise, I mean, why would you have a family in the first place if you're just going to work all the time? Other than that, he has developed this really close relationship to one of the other detectives on his team, Kate. And from the beginning, it's been really weird because his character has been like, oh, I love my wife and we're always talking about how his wife is wonderful. She was also a cop before she became a mother and decided to stay home with the kids. And, you know, sometimes she tries to talk to him about certain cases that he's working on just so she can get a glimpse. And also because sometimes he helps and he's always like shutting it down, but he's always like complimenting her and just thinking out loud on how amazing she is. But since she, like their family life, their family dynamic has changed and now she is sort of upset with him all the time because he's never there, he shifted and now he's like really close to this Kate person, this really young girl who has been on the team for like 18 months, obviously a lot younger, uh, and they just like sort of got together. At least, you know they were going to her house and they kissed before they entered the house so you can assume what happened from there i was really upset i was like i read that part last night and was like what a dog i mean really because this happened right after a weekend in which he was supposed to do no work and he was always like running to the bathroom saying that he had to go to the bathroom just so he could reply to emails like couldn't let go and after the kids went to bed his wife was like well we're alone we could spend some time together and he was like oh i'm just gonna do some work and the next day he goes to kate's house and kisses her i mean how old are you you're supposed to be a man so far i'm enjoying it I'm enjoying uh, Ray's chapters more than Jenna's chapters because, um, I mean, now there has been some action. But till now, Jenna's chapters were really all about like just narrative. Nothing would really happen. You go like two or three paragraphs just describing the waves. And now she started this business, you know, she got a dog, so she's trying uh, to get her life back together, even though she's not able to talk about it. So she has met this guy, the vet, who took care of her dog, she found a dog, <laughs> and he's really interested in her, but she's not ready yet. She went out with him but he started asking personal questions about her life and we don't have all the details but we know that her family life was really weird we got a few details here and there but we don't know exactly what happened and she's not ready to talk about it let alone her son's accident so he doesn't even know that she had a son the one thing that like it makes really it makes a lot of sense that she doesn't want to talk about it because the way the accident happened it makes her look bad and a lot of like the media was making her look bad because jacob they were going home after school and jacob let go they were holding hands and he let go and he just ran across the street and it was raining and foggy like you couldn't see anything and the car came and hit him and jenna admitted that he had done that before he had let go before People are saying she's a bad mother and she feels horrible. She feels like it's her own fault, obviously. And this is, I think this is why she doesn't want to talk about it because she doesn't want people to tell her that because that's how she feels anyway. She already knows that. Um, it's a really weird situation because this happens a lot when kids get hit by cars. Sometimes it's because they just, you know, they just ran and we didn't have like we parents. I'm, I'm not a parent, but parents can't, grab their kids and they're just running across the street and it's so easy to just jump to conclusions and say that oh you know it's your fault because you should have taught him not to do that um it's just a really weird situation i have a class in 20 10 minutes more or less and so at half past one and then i'm done at half past no a quarter past I think and I'm gonna do some work after that so I don't have to do a lot of work in the evening I have a couple things that I want to get done today and then I'm just gonna read because everything else is pretty much done 
this is just my vlog of me reading uh, I'll Let You Go by Claire McIntosh. So a new author, at least to me, like I have never read anything by Claire McIntosh and also a new genre, sort of, because I thought this was a thriller. I don't really think this is a thriller, but nevertheless, a new genre. I never read anything like this, even though like the premise is not very like it's not wow so fresh never no one has ever done anything like it um it is still a really interesting read and i really like that we have two different point of views and like two storylines happening at the same time i'll talk to you soon when you know i have something else to say <laughs> bye it's wrong i finished chapter 15 and it was about ray and it was like after their kiss after ray and kate kissing and I thought that that kiss, you know, led up to something. Um, it was a kiss. They didn't do anything else. A kiss is bad enough anyway, in my opinion. So, yeah, I'm just going to continue reading. It is um, later. I didn't start reading right away. And I'm still considering what I want for dinner. I don't even know if I'm going to make dinner or just have something. I don't know. I just, I'll see. Talk to you soon. <laughs> Hi guys, good morning. It is like 20 to 8. <laughs> the Wednesday is my busy day, at least now it is. And I start really early <laughs> and I went to bed quite late. But my cat woke me up this morning and I decided to get up and make myself tea because um, I never had the chance on a normal Wednesday. So I just wanted to tell you that I kept on reading last night, but I didn't update you because it was already too late. Like my mom was sleeping, I didn't want to um, whisper because I don't know if you could hear me or not since I've been filming with my phone. Um, it's always easier to vlog with my phone than my like really bulky, heavy camera, but I regret that because last night it was like, 1 a.m. and I really wanted to finish oh, sorry I really wanted to finish one more chapter and so I'm going to just try to contextualize the situation for you Ray and Kate decided to do the anniversary appeal trying to look for more evidence or witnesses and on the Jacobs like hit and run case and they got a lead and I was like fine um, they're trying to forget about that kiss and focus on work in the meantime Jenna uh, is getting along with Patrick the vet and they're going on dates and you know just getting to know each other their relationship like I really like Patrick but she is so annoying I'm really sorry, but she was really annoying at some point. Um, for example, he's a volunteer for like, I don't remember the, the name now, like the boathouse. Whenever someone is in trouble, they go out and they try to save people. And he asked her, he asked her to just go back to my house and wait for me there. And he has like this huge dresser that belonged to his grandmother. And he said that the first time she saw that, he said, oh, that is like full of stuff. Like, don't open those doors. And she's like, why doesn't he want me to open the doors? I mean, what secrets is he keeping? And I'm like, he doesn't want you to open the doors because the dresser is full and stuff is going to fall out. I mean, don't you have a like a dresser or a cupboard like that at home? Because I do. <laughs> I have a junk drawer at home, like... Uh, in the hallway, like just miscellaneous stuff there, it's always jammed, and it's not because I'm keeping secrets. Uh, but she ended up opening the dresser and she found this old photo, um, just in the middle of all the junk he had there. And it's like a photo of him with a girl, and it's like, and she's like, Oh, maybe he is still with this girl, and he's like using me and he's dating both of us the picture was clearly like put away in the middle of all the junk and you think that he's like he did it on purpose because he doesn't want you to see the picture i mean you know give the guy some credit um 
what upset me is that she had this idea that his life was perfect she says something like that at some point saying that like his life he doesn't have to do with like he doesn't struggle with past demons or anything like that because his life is perfect he never went through any traumatic experience and i'm like how do you know that like every he opens up to you he talks about his family he talks about like all this all the things that he can talk to you about during a first date you're not supposed to go on the first date and just say like oh yeah by the way this happened to me once and like i'm broken inside because of that i mean give it some time people would say she has trust issues since the accident like jacob's accident and like seeing her son die and all that but i'm like okay i understand that she's going through a very complicated like moment in her life obviously she lost a son but like no one forced her to get close to this person and you know a romantic relationship is doesn't really match up you know you could have issues with having to tell the person what happened and you're not ready to have to deal with that but why would you just believe that this person who got close to you like he got close to you is somehow trying to trick you and doesn't trust you is hiding stuff from you like how do those things correlate it was after christmas that ray and kate found out like the address of a person who um who is the suspect on the case like the main suspect on having um caused the accident and ran away they go to the address and they want to arrest this person in the meantime jenna is like cooking dinner with patrick and you know they're just having a good time and jenna just freaks out because he threw some water at her and it we it seems like she's about to tell him what happened to her but they are interrupted because someone you know rings the doorbell and they think it's the landlord to fix the lock and it's not it's ray and kate and i'm like what so instead of going and arrest the suspect they decided to look for jacob's mom i mean why uh no kate is like i'm here to arrest you <laughs> and i didn't know i'm so shocked it was a plot twist that i was not expecting i mean looking back maybe i should have suspected but i thought jenna was jacob's mom not the person driving the car that killed jacob she keeps talking about like her ex-husband not wanting kids and like he was not a good fit and all that so we know that jacob's dad didn't want didn't care for him didn't want to have anything to do with him um we know that jacob's mom got hurt uh, during the accident because like she fell and she hurt like one of her hands and jenna is an artist and she had an accident with her hand and now she can't work and we're like okay so um makes sense and then you know she's just like keeping the secret from patrick and you know she's having nightmares with jacob and she can hear the sound of the windscreen cracking and his head you know hitting the pavement and because she has this picture in her head like him falling hitting his head and just like lie there i think that's why i thought jenna was jacob's mom because she was on the outside she wasn't like if you are in the car you can't really see the child hitting the pavement right because you would see him hit the windscreen but then he would fall over he would hit the pavement but you couldn't see it because you're inside so because she's like looking from the outside i thought that she was jacob's mom this whole time she wasn't so i don't know i don't know where jacob's mom is she went missing like jenna because jenna didn't say anything to anyone she just grabbed her stuff and went to wales i mean again the same thing her mom his mom went missing and jenna just one day left and she threw her phone away how was I supposed to know that Jenna was not Jacob's mom? Obviously, she hasn't told anything to Patrick, which is understandable. But at the same time, now he's going to find out in the worst way possible because, like, oh, 
these two detectives are here to take me to Bristol because they I killed a child. I mean, you had plenty of time to tell him, um, but she didn't want to because otherwise he would leave her. So it's just, it's fair to think that she's Jacob's mom. Another thing that I should have noticed, I mean, I noticed this before, but I didn't really pay attention to it, is that the, the chapters, I told you that if we have chapters about Jenna and then we have chapters about Ray. The chapters about Ray are in the third person and the chapters about Jenna in the first person. That's the issue. Why? <laughs> Why? I think it was just for us to get, you know, closer to Jenna and feel for her because you... The idea is for you to think that Jenna is... I actually went back like to chapter 2 or whatever just trying to see if I missed something. Um, but I think the idea is for you to think Jenna is Jacob's mom. And so you get close to her because you you, you sympathize with her. You sympathize with her. Um, you know, her son died. She's trying to just keep it together and not lose it. And, you know, you, you, you sort of get close to that person. And now you found out that she is not Jacob's mom. She actually killed a kid and she left town and she never came forward. Um, and she was just trying to stay away because basically um, she didn't want to have to deal with the consequences of her actions. And now it's really hard for you to like Jenna. I mean, I was already having trouble with Jenna, you know, even though I, I thought she was Jacob's mom, I didn't agree with the way she was doing things, like just trying to forget her old life as if it didn't exist, keeping everything away from people, like not telling them what happened. Yesterday I was like, oh, I couldn't make any noises because, you know, my mom was asleep um, and I couldn't scream like I wanted to. So, yeah. That's where I stopped. I stopped when they arrested Jenna for, you know, uh, reckless driving and killing someone. Uh, I'm going to make some tea and just, I don't know, I still, I think I still have some time. Yeah. And I'm going to maybe watch something on YouTube before we start. Uh, I'm sorry about my eyes. Just <laughs> it's really early and it's really bright outside, so I have to put on my glasses in a minute. But yeah, I just wanted to give you my update because this was... I feel tricked. I'm not completely happy with this plot twist. I feel tricked. I don't like when narrators are unreliable like that. I mean, I trusted you and you lied to me. You're not Jacob's mom. Um, but yeah, this is the perfect example of an unreliable narrator. If you never came across one, it looks like this, basically. So... I'm gonna go and make myself tea and start my day. Here we go. Sorry about the weird angle. <laughs> I had a double chin like this. This is the first chapter of part two. Is really weird because Again, it's in the first person, and I don't know, but I sort of think that this is about Jenna. And it's a, it says, like, right in the first sentence, student union. So I think this is when she was at university, when we were just, like, having a flashback. And maybe it, this is going to be about her former husband. I mean, I don't really think she's divorced, because she never actually answered... Or she twisted her answer when Patrick asked her if she was married. So I don't really know if she is married, but I think we're just going to read the flashback now. So I'll talk to you really, really soon. So I read uh, chapter 29. And now we have like another chapter of Ian ahead. And these chapters are getting more and more difficult to to read just because he's a horrible person um, but chapter 29 I mean they were just uh, looking at a car that Jenna had when she was arrested and they it's like a cheap car and he has like an address and a weird logo 
So they went there, Ray and Kate. They met this old lady and she said she doesn't know Jenna, but she had the logo on her scarf. So now they think something's up. I find this really strange because the police has been looking for her for over a year because she killed a five-year-old boy. Let's talk about this as if it is happening like in real life. She didn't tell them where the car is, but she confessed to the crime and they have like ways to like make her confess or, or they, they have ways to get to the car, I mean, somehow. But they had enough to charge her and they decide to let her go because they think there's more to it. I mean, I think that anybody else would just charge her because you never know if you'll be able to find anything and you don't know her. She might be like trying to find a way to just not be held accountable for this because you let her go and now she's just, you know, you don't know who she's with <laughs> or what she's doing. I still don't know what happened to her. I still don't know why this is... I'm just hoping that it doesn't excuse her, but I still don't know. Maybe she wasn't driving. Could that be the the situation that she wasn't driving and Ian was, dri was driving and that's why, like, she doesn't want to talk because she doesn't want to blame him and she prefers to be found guilty of something she didn't do so she doesn't have to see him again. Is that it? I mean, still, it's pretty stupid. You know, it, it seemed fine, like, Good premise. Um, I was really enjoying the format. Jacob's death was just like the medium they used to develop these characters. Like he was barely mentioned for the first part of the of the book. I mean, he was mentioned from time to time, or just like to remind you that he was killed. But you don't know anything about him, and yeah, it's just it's kind of sad. Uh, but other than that, it wasn't really bothering me. And now, like. The second part of the book is really bothering me. I just finished reading chapter 44. They just realized that Jennifer is Jenna. Because Patrick went there with the box Jenna keeps under her bed. And there's a passport and it says Jennifer Pet Peterson. Peterson. And they're like... Remember that girl, Eve? That's her sister. Wow. Wow. And they're like, how did we miss that? You weren't actually doing your job. I mean, oh my god. Don't you need an ID or something? I mean, I don't know how things work in the UK, but here, if someone calls me, like if the police calls me and I have to go there, I probably, the first thing they want is my ID. I mean, why didn't you ask for her ID? It's just... What the hell? I mean, who is Jenna Gray? You don't even know. It's just, And now they went to a place called the Domestic Abuse Unit. And they found out that Ian has um, is the subject of a restraining order against a woman called Marie. And Ian mentions Marie when he first meets Jenna. And then he asks uh, for stuff that involves... A Jenna Gray and Ian and she says here it is this is everything we've got on Jennifer and Ian Peterson I mean they literally have a file and they just figured that out great detective work dude you should definitely get that promotion so happy Patrick actually agrees with me he thinks that she didn't kill Jacob so I actually think it was Ian which upsets me even more because I don't know if I should say this. I don't want to come across as being sensitive. I just, you know, the fact that she's upset that people get away with, you know, crimes because there are lawyers, barristers looking after their interests and trying to lower their sentence. Why would she let him leave? And he could do the same thing. Like what, she, what he did to her, he could do it again to a different girl. It's just, it's a very complicated subject, guys. Um, let's see. Let's see if I'm right. I'll be back. Guys, I was right. She didn't kill him. This was so predictable. I'm dying here. Ian killed Jacob and... And she never said anything. And... But yeah, I just wanted to let you know that I was right predictable 
I'm really disappointed now with this, but I'll talk to you tomorrow and I'll tell you uh, if I finish or not. So, see you tomorrow. Hi guys, so it's Saturday and I just wanted to end this vlog because I finished reading I Let You Go by Claire McIntosh last night and I'm not really happy with this book. I just, you know, first of all, I was right. She wasn't driving the car. She was covering up for him because she was afraid. I get it because she was a victim of abuse for years and... You know, I understand that she had trust issues, that she was afraid and all that. But at the same time, it just seems so, I don't know. It's just, I mean, you, you have to be rational about these things. And, you know, she was so impressed to have a barrister that was trying to reduce her sentence, even though she admitted she killed him. Um, she killed Jacob. And she was like, oh, my God. Our justice system is so broken. I mean, we have barristers trying to reduce criminal sentences, even though they know they're guilty. First of all, that's just so that's just that's just stupid. I'm sorry. Like you didn't know that. And second of all, like she's so against it. Like she wants the barrister to sort of just allow her sentence to be the one they decide on. But then she is about to allow this guy. To just continue with his life and probably do the same to another girl and you know probably kill another person because he was the one driving and I predicted that from the moment that guy showed up like the moment Ian's chapters were introduced it was obvious and that's what really just annoyed me you had this plot twist that you know some people might find amazing others don't I mean I have to admit that I didn't see it coming I thought Jenna was Jacob's mom and I didn't pick up on the fact that she wasn't so you got me there but then the second part of the book was just stupid it, to me it was just stupid first of all they you know they arrest someone they never ask for her ID it was just so like American cop shows like in the last minute the detective shows up he just gets her out of there and you know talks to her we are on your side now I mean no it shouldn't be like that you know she was a bit victim of abuse obviously but at the same time she um, lied and she omitted like the truth and evidence and you know that's against the law and when they mention that at the end like she asks will I have to do with any consequences because of this because I lied and they said oh yeah there's like a small issue but it will probably be okay like we're going to that let that go and that just seems really unfair because any other person would have to face justice and I hate it hate it I hated the fact that Jacob was Ian's son that he had with you know Anya because they had like this one night stand and she got pregnant and she had the baby anyway and he never cared for the child and then just all of a sudden they it, they happen to be driving he happens to be drunk and they happen to be um, there on that day when Anya is walking home uh, with Jacob and he just happens to see her even though they could barely see anything he's just he's drunk out of his mind okay he's drunk out of his mind he can't see anything but somehow he sees her and he's like oh yeah that's her and that's my son and i don't want her to keep annoying me because yeah by the way she keeps annoying me about being a father so oh the kid just let go oh yeah let's just take care of business i mean are you kidding me? I mean, if you had told me that that happened, but he actually planned it, but it just happened. It was just a coincidence. It just happened. It was ridiculous. I hate it. And then, like, the police, is just, they're, they're idiots. First of all, like, they don't ask for any ID. They don't know that her name is not Jenna, it's Jennifer. That Gray is her maiden name, that she's married. Like, they don't know anything. And then after the trial and they're looking for Ian so they know Ian is dangerous and they just let her go back to the cottage and just like wait there we're gonna catch him just wait there like 
oh, and by the way, she lives away from everybody. Like she doesn't have any neighbors. It just happens that uh, Patrick has to go back and get the dog. So Jenny is left alone. And then you have that scene, like that really obvious scene from like TV movies when the guy is like unconscious and she's trying to get away. But then in the last minute he grabs her ankle and like pulls and she falls and at the end she decides to do something for herself and she just ends up killing him. Ray's family dynamic and his personal issues would contribute to the story, but they didn't. They just basically disappeared. You know, we, we are here learning lots about his wife and his son. For what? Nothing happened. It didn't contribute to the plot at all. This is not about Ray. And, oh, the person that we should learn more about, you know, Anya, Jacob's mom. Yeah, she's, she shows up and she just sort of faces Jenna before the trial when they still think that she's guilty. We don't know anything about Anya. We know, like... A little bit about her backstory but that's it like we don't she's not a big part of the book at all she 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 has no presence i mean it really seems unfair that the author decided to kill this kid and just break this mother's heart because it didn't contribute at all to the story i mean couldn't this be just a matter of a, an abusive relationship and the woman trying to get away from an abusive husband did we need jacob's death i don't think we did I don't think it was important at all. It's just we could ha could have had the same book, imagine the same story, but just remove Jacob's death from the equation. And you have a relationship, you have a husband and a wife, and um, she is stuck in an abusive marriage and she gets away. I think people are really a bit scared of talking about this in a negative way because it is such a sensitive subject, but at the same time, I mean... I'm sorry, she was just really passive and annoying, and um, she was just describing her breath all the time, and yeah. When she finally meets um, her sister, when she's in a hospital, like right before the end, and um, they're sort of patching things up, and Eve tells her that, you know, it was normal for her to get stuck in a marriage like that, because you're just like mom, and then Jenna finds out that her dad hit her mom she he used to hit her mom and eve actually witnessed that and they're sort of making it seem as if it's a generic problem like oh you got that from your mom because it's sort of the way jenna reacted she was like oh it makes sense now why i stay with him no it, no 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 it's not like that i could handle the first part of the book even though it was really slow i read chapter after chapter and she wasn't really doing anything it was like five six seven pages of her just talking about the beach and you know now i'm going back to my cottage and it's really cold and you know i'm breathing heavily and that was it like for the first part that was it i was more interested in the detective's perspective and i've noticed that some people aren't because yesterday after i finished the book i checked goodreads and i was reading the um, reviews a lot of people love this book but a lot of people also dislike this book and they all say that the detective's perspective was really boring. I actually really liked it because I thought that it was going, you know, it was building up to something, but no. I, I don't think I'll read more by Claire McIntosh, um, only if I'm really, really curious. But right now, I wouldn't even buy the physical copy. I got this book for like two euros or one euro ninety nine. And like I said, if I really like a book that I read on my e-reader, I'm going to get the copy eventually. But this is not a book that I want because I'll never reread this. It was just, it was just stupid. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this vlog. I know that not a lot of stuff happened uh, other than me just updating you from time to time. But, you know, we're at home and it's actually raining today. So even if I wanted to go for a walk, I couldn't. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys are well. And today's Saturday, so have a nice weekend and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.